it is 93 degrees here, 70% humidity. So it's feeling pretty warm. I'm in the shade now and I'm still like sweating. This, see this wheel? See how it's like sideways? I don't know if you can see it in the camera like that, but this wheel is kind of sideways. Came back from filling my boat up with gas and realized, yeah, look at this. That there is a broken axle. And this other one behind it here, that is not too far behind. I was assuming I was gonna need to do this soon, but I wasn't ready to do it yet. So I'm gonna be replacing these axles. My buddy Seth and I drove down. He's got a, he had a connection with this through his dad to get some brand new axles. Got the first tire off. I left these back. Um, axle on for now just to give it feel safer with this here while I'm working on this axle here so I got this tire off and I'm gonna try to I already broke these loose on the back um, there's a what do we have here it is a 5 16 this is 5 16 there's a 5 16 nut on the back here Before I remove this, I want, I'm going to make a mark here where it lined up. In here. Just in case there's any slop in the new one. I've seen where you measure from, from this point or this point up to the tongue on the same spot on the same on this side and then measure on the same side. Then you know the um, axle is positioned right according to where the tongue is. So I'm going to go ahead and Go to the other side, pull that tire off, put the marks on it as well, and then get ready to drop this axle down. Go ahead and mark this side as well. I have to break this loose. I don't want to break a bar, so I'm just using a piece of pipe. Top of the bolts aren't even moving. It's kind of like oxidized in place. It's an aviation nut on it. I'll be using those again. Slide some four by fours or six by sixes under here. Keep this end up so it's not just dropping right down when I undo the other side. oxidized. Let me get a hammer. So right here it's oxidized because the steel and the aluminum react to each other. There's a plate in here can see that or not. I believe that. Normally they've been making them out of aluminum so that that plate goes before the trailer goes. And this seems to be I call it, I call it bark that's used to be aluminum. Now it's just like oxidized. Whatever aluminum turns into when it oxidizes. Right now this is kind of giving me a pain so I'm gonna jump back to the other side. Pull the bolts from that see if I can't drop this a little easier with all the bolts off of it. I 
can relieve some of the pressure here with this. Before I go back to the other side, I'm going to crank this side back up. That way it's not all the tension on the other side there. Go ahead and pull this board out of here. Alright, that's free. These are fairly new um, hubs. The bearings are probably good in them still. I might take my time and after I'm done with this and knock these hubs off of here for uh, spare hubs with bearings already ready to go in them. So right here, salt water and zinc. This is aluminum. The axle has got a zinc coating on it. It's galvanized. These bolts are having a hard time getting out of there. See this around here? It's got all this oxidation and all that is preventing me from, it's preventing me from pushing those uh, bolts back through the trailer. What I'm Now I can get that bolt out of there see the oxidation I was pulling like quarter inch chunks of oxidation between the trailer and the old axle I tried yesterday to hammer straight up on it and it would not budge so today I just like hey I'll hit that on an angle that'll give me some more uh, leverage on it this is all it's like a ridge right here. This is all corroded, oxidized. That aluminum's like, got eaten away. So I've seen where people will take a uh, aluminum uh, bracket spacer and put between the axle and the frame to prevent that from happening. But when you think about it, why would you use aluminum? Because aluminum corrodes. It would corrode the same way and then you just have a space so i'm going to take this i cut I a chunk of this starboard here i took it, inflate it took it on the table saw and i flayed it down and made um, a little thinner piece made two out of one strip and then i'm gonna line this up with the put this on the between the frame of the trailer and the axle to help prevent the oxidation um it's actually a, an electrolysis um, is what's happening. The two different types of metals and the salt water are corroding it um, super fast. Hopefully this will hold up to the, what the trailer and axle has to put up with when I'm driving it down the road. We'll see. If it starts to break down, I'll pull them out of there and I'll do something different, but I'm gonna try these out. All right, so what I have here is um, a couple uh, teaspoons, tablespoons of uh, white vinegar. And these aren't too bad, I'm gonna leave those these are all corroded and stuff. They're not corroded. They're not corroded, but they have the oxidation on them. I'm going to put them in this vinegar water and try to dissolve some of that oxidation off of them, clean them up a little bit. It appears to be working pretty quick, actually. I was going to buy new bolts, but if I can save these, why not? They're um, big stainless steel bolts, so reuse them if I can. Well, that's setting. I'm going to try to uh, straighten this. i got a few of these that are uh, bent up pretty bad. I'm going to try to straighten them out a little bit on the anvil here. A lot better. Do that to the rest of them. So that's uh, 
vinegar water been sitting for uh, probably a little over 10 minutes looks like they're ready to be cleaned up um, I was able to pop the other washers off of them and clean those up and straighten them up but uh, I think I can just take this wire wheel and clean up this the remaining here I think it's soft enough now we'll see It's starting to work. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes in the uh, vinegar though. I'm having a little difficulty. These old bolt holes, um, they're eight inches apart. And I'm thinking I need to uh, use these center holes here. Um, pretty sure if I shift this axle to that front hole, being this. The torsion arm is, is slightly longer on this and in a different position than the old axle. It's shoved more this way. So I think if I use this hole here and line that up with this front hole and then re-drill another hole back here to line up with this hole here. Um, these bolts are just slightly bigger than that bracket hole. So I'm gonna ream that out first and then I'm gonna test fit this uh, get those reamed out, get the other side done, and then test fit this to see if that lines up good. And maybe even throw the tire on there to see where that lines up as far as on the opening of the uh, fender here. going to temporarily tie this thing in, in place here. I got this bolt kind of holding it where it needs to be, I think, so I can test to see if this is going to line up with my new tire. Then I can release my jack to do the other side. Need to open the trailer a little bit. But it looks like looks like these are gonna work fine. All lines up good. There's plenty of clearance here. Looks basically like the old one was, so I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go ahead and you can see this. Go ahead and drill this other hole out so that I can put that other bolt in right there. Stretch this line from the tongue, making sure there's no twist in it and that it's not touching anything right here. And I'm gonna measure to the here, to the center plate. So I have 18 foot, two and a half inches. Matches the other side. So I know that this distance is the same from center hub to the tongue. I also measured from the frame of the trailer to the outside of this hub here on both sides and lined them up so that I think it was seven and three eighths from the trailer frame to the outside of the hub so that it's even on both sides of the trailer. So I'm also going to mark a new spot here so I know where the line is up at. Let's see here. I'm going to mark, how do I want to mark that? I'll just do one right here, kind of center of that. And I'll make one mark right here. And then I know that when I bolt this in place, I drew a line here. Drew a line here. So I know it didn't shift 
so I know it didn't shift this way or that way. And then a line reference line here, so I know that it didn't shift one back or back or forward. So do that on both sides, and then I will mark the underside where I want that hole to be drilled through, because um, there's going to be another hole right here somewhere. Mark that and mark this other side here too. There we go. Do the same on the other side. Start off with a smaller drill bit and then I'm gonna work my way up uh, a little bit bigger each time. And then the last step, I'll use that other step drill bit to uh, ream it out the right size. I'm gonna drill the rest of this after I drop the axle back down. It's doable. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, lay this on here. Like that. And I'm gonna go and trace those holes I just made on that and drill that out so I can put this back together. To me, those holes don't have to be perfect, so I'm just gonna mark these out. This is just a spacer, so. Should be ready to go. Looks like it'll line up good. snug but not too bad. I can make it work I think. Lining these lines up again. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit but I'm not gonna make it super tight yet until I get the other side put together a little bit more. Got them in place. Got the other tire on the other side. Now I just gotta put this one on. Put some anti seize on these. All right, so I got this wheel done. Now I'm gonna start working on the next axle back and uh, try to get that taken care of, hopefully tonight. Probably not, probably be another day. It's so hot out right now. All right, that was a longer project than I anticipated but I have both axles back on and I got all four tires back on. I'm going fishing now.